Hello again, Danny from Surfer here, and I'm back for this next lesson. And in this lesson, we're going to build a little bit on what we talked about in the previous lesson, you know, search intent, user intent, and all that jazz. In this lesson, we're going to answer two pretty important questions. Number one, how do you find the best content that's ranking for your keyword, you know, in order to compare and contrast and figure out what's working? The second question is, what guidelines and parameters should you follow and keep in mind when deciding which keyword to rank for? So there's a lot of information in this lesson, as per usual. Ready to take notes? Ready to get started? Let's go. I want you all to think of SEO as this living, breathing monster. I mean, sorry, very real marketing science. <laughs> it's always changing. What worked last year may not work right now. And there's no such thing as golden rules, only guidelines and best practices. Research, however, is almost always a good idea. There are many benefits to running keyword research. You can find out which keywords are worth targeting. This is the most important aspect of keyword research. You can determine which keywords you're able to compete for and which will bring you the most valuable traffic. You can also select keywords with the biggest potential. Significant traffic for a keyword doesn't always mean this traffic will go to your site. And even if it does, you won't necessarily convert the visitors. Why? We'll talk about it in a second. Also, you can assess the user's needs and intentions for a given keyword. The content must meet their expectations of your readers. The SERP can tell you a lot about your audience's pain points. You can also find out the preferred form of content for a query. Is it a blog post, a product page, or maybe it's a video? You can prepare an outline of a text and or segment the topic. Google shows us sections like people also ask or searches related to, and we can answer these questions in our text to satisfy our readers. Also, you can estimate the range of information for one article. Are people looking for ultimate guides or are they just after short, sweet definitions? Lastly, you can find out which stage of awareness your prospect is at. I'll give you more information on that very soon. People ask different questions at different stages. Check out what kind of information Google is offering the searchers, and you'll be able to guess which stage of awareness your article should cover. For example, if most articles are product comparisons and listicles, you know that this keyword will be useful for prospects in the product awareness stage. As you can see, keyword research is essential, both from an SEO and content quality perspective. And as SEO writers, we want to combine them both. Now that we know what keyword research is and why we should care, let's move on to the most crucial part of keyword research, keyword evaluation. Keyword evaluation is exactly like it sounds, determining whether or not a given keyword is right for us. So you have a few neat ideas. You've taken them from the SERP, gathered ideas from your coworkers, scanned social media, and or maybe ran a poll among your customers. But not all of them will help you achieve your goal, which is increased organic traffic and a higher conversion rate. You need to consider four things, search volume, search intent, difficulty, and relevance. In order to find the best content that ranks for your keyword, you'll also have to look around at your competitors. Why? Well, competitor analysis will tell us how long our article should be, for example. Writing a longer piece isn't always the best option. You should stick to the middle of the pack here. You can instead save your strength by writing shorter, more direct to the point content. In fact, writing more than necessary just for the sake of writing when the question could be answered in a more straightforward way may have the opposite of your intended effect. Another thing competitor analysis can tell us is, for example, what the common structure and type of articles are that your user is interested in. For example, how-tos, lists, FAQs, long form guides, recipes, or simply short answers. And lastly, we can find out what question the article needs to answer. With Surfer, you can check out the estimated search volume for given keywords. If it's super high, it probably means that the keyword is competitive. Usually, the higher the search volume, the higher the competition. The more people search for something, the more sales or commission from ads you can make. Search volume analysis can help you pick low competitive keywords also. And everyone, please don't forget what I mentioned in the previous lesson. You can use Surfer in order to kind of build your entire content strategy. We have these amazing filter options that you can use, and you can also check volume and search intent. To speed up the process, let me introduce you to the Content Planner tool. You choose the Content Planner tool in your Surfer account, and you create a query for your main or seed keyword. Next, you pick your location or market. Then, you wait while Surfer crunches the data. 
Our algorithms are based on machine learning, BERT, and clustering logic, so you can be sure that the results will be optimal. When the query is ready, just click it, and voila, you'll see a bunch of tiles. These are the ideas for your next article and all the keywords they should include. What's super cool is that you can filter the supporting pages based on the search intent they should respond to and by their difficulty. If you connect Google Search Console to your Surfer account, you'll be able to see relative keyword difficulty, which is calculated based on your domain strength. This is how you can automate your keyword research process. Next, when you want to establish some parameters for your post or your article, you should pay attention to length. For example, you can even copy the articles to a file and draw the average number of words. You should also pay attention to paragraph length, the number of paragraphs, the number of headings, and what keywords they contain, additional media like pictures or videos, etc. And lastly, overall website quality, whether or not the article is easy to read and navigate. Okay, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling just slightly overwhelmed. So let's just take a communal deep breath together. You ready? Three, two, one, in, out. Now, oh, where was I? Let's talk about our content editor. So this, my friends, is Surfer's tool to help you establish these benchmarks and ensure you leave no stone unturned. You're only human, you know? Content editor helps you prepare guidelines for your content, and it has a very specific and practical metric to help you choose your competition. See the circle? This is the content score number of each search engine result. To make sure you're only using high quality articles as inspiration, choose articles with the highest score possible. Using Surfer's content editor, you'll be able to check recommended guidelines on word and paragraph count, receive suggested number for images and headers to include, consult the list of terms to use and NLP safe keywords to include and how many times. Don't worry, I'll talk more about NLP in the following lesson. You'll also be able to cross-reference with competitors ranking for the same keyword. And lastly, you've got an on-screen metric showing you how well you're doing or not doing in real time. That's pretty freaking cool, right? At least, I think so. So we're gonna stop this lesson here, okay? In the next lesson, we're gonna build some outlines, but until then, happy surfing. <laughs>